world of technology ends 2022 in a very different place than it started the year. Some people are describing it now as a tech winter or even a tech wreck. The picture is different for startups, though, and smaller technology companies. So let's have a look back at 2022 and a bit of a preview as to what companies are up to next year with Ian Brown from Dogpatch. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Joe. Um, Ian, remind us what Dogpatch does. So Dogpatch is, uh, you know, it started off as just a, a, a co-working space in, in the centre of the Docklands down in CHQ building. And now it is an amalgamation of a lot of different things that actually involves programmes. But at its core, uh, what it is there, it's there to help founders. So we help founders right from the early stage right up through to, to uh, raising capital and onto acquisition, hopefully. So you, you give them advice, but you also steer them in the right direction to get uh, VC funds or venture capital support. One hundred percent. It's not just about the advice, but but also the network, right? So we become like kind of a magnet that other that other entrepreneurs come through to help those coming behind them as well. Right. It's it, as the hope, uh, the hub and spoke type thing. Talk to me about twenty twenty two. What was it like for the startup sector? Uh, it was very much a year of two halves this year. I mean, tw- the start, the first half of 2022 was a continuation of, of kind of what was a bubble in 2021. And there was, there was quite a lot of funding that was put into to all stages of growth companies. Um, and and then kind of a, the, the sort of the winds changed sort of midway through the year and, and everyone started to pull back and it became more difficult. So kind of we had these kind of two very distinct halves of the year um, and like in Ireland, there's no different to anywhere else in the world at this point. So it's like it was the same pretty much globally. Uh, and there were some really good companies in Ireland, like like Yonder and Trackworks, some really good early companies that were growing and then right up to, to kind of more unicorns being created. But then in the second half of the year, that was very different. And has the startup scene been infected, for the want of a better a verb, by the tech slowdown, job losses among the big tech companies, a mood change in the second half? Uh, undoubtedly, I, I, I think it's difficult to escape that, uh, and, and it's it's there's both positive and negatives to that. Like it is, it is obviously it's um, you know the job losses are, are very problematic for the whole the whole industry. But what that does lead to is like more people thinking about doing new and different things, and and sort of new businesses can actually be generated from this. It, it, it tends to be an exciting time for this. If you look back on sort of 10, 10, 12 years ago, whenever we came out of the last recession, there's some really interesting and super companies formed around there. And mostly that was around new technology. So that was kind of on the back of the iPhone coming out. And some might say we're at a point now where we're going to see these kind of new levels of innovation that happen, that, that huge big companies can be built just coming out of this. So there are positives and negatives that can come out of it. Um, we've, we've had discussions in the past on this show in which we said that the large technology companies had a distortionary impact on hiring for the smaller technology companies, simply because the bigger guys were more attractive, they had more money, they paid more, mm-hmm. uh, perks and all that kind of stuff. If there is a slowdown among the big technology companies, could that then turn to a, an advantage when it comes to hiring staff for the smaller startups? Absolutely. Yes, I, th- I think you know a, a smaller startup can never compete with a huge FDI company on anything like salary and perks and everything. But what, what they can is, is prove on like, interest and on future value and an equity but i think now that actually much of the the share options that 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 are there for for employees of big fdi firms they're not so attractive anymore and now people are thinking about oh, okay well now what can i do with my life what can i choose to do and often it's like starting new innovative firms that are going to build the next big companies of the future so the guys who may have gone into the big fdi technology companies might say do you know what i'm actually going to start up that company that idea that i've had germinating in my head for months or years i'm actually going to do it now i'm not going to look for a job absolutely it's it's and, and there couldn't be a better time to do it there's actually you know there's not only like the support of organizations like dogpatch and others around here but there's been a lot of capital raised. Like in the very early stages of, of company formation, you need a little bit of capital to get you going. And that's the bit of the whole ecosystem that least is the least affected by the macro changes. So actually, there's a, there, there is quite a lot of capital available in the Irish market for someone to, to like go from, oh, I've got an idea, to like actually go and take advantage of that. So I, I think it's, it's a pretty good time if you're like just at the idea stage of a company to go out and raise some money and get going for the next sort of 12 to 18 months. And what type of startups should we and will we see in 2023? What, what sectors, what kind of focus areas? I, I was talking about the, the changes in technology can actually provide really new and interesting companies that come out of that. I think one of the things, there's been a lot of hype 
um, over the over the last little while around artificial intelligence, but it's clear that that is still at the bottom of the S curve and is is going to permeate almost all of um, anywhere that software is. I'm particularly interested about sort of healthcare and financial services there, but I think if you're building in that sort of space, then it's really interesting. I think Ireland's got some strengths and, and we should play into that. Um, but yeah, like I'm kind of thinking artificial intelligence is going to be, that's what's going to be the top of mind in 2023. Okay, well, if anyone is thinking of starting up and they need that nudge or need that bit of advice or be, need to be steered in the right direction, uh, go to people like Ian. Ian Brown from, uh, is it dogpatchlabs.com, Ian? Dogpatch Labs, yes, you call in. We have open door policy. We will see founders at any stage. Just Do you have decent you coffee? Uh, free coffee. Is it decent though? <laughs> <laughs> yes it is it's good coffee and it's decent <laughs> alright Ian have a, have a lovely Christmas that's Ian Brown from Dog, Dog Patch Labs